Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to um, Root and Revive on Super Screen TV. I am your host, Bisola Lassisi, and of course, you know, I always have Pastor Victor with me here in the studio. Good afternoon, and happy Sunday. Good afternoon. Good evening, Fine. Fine. Give God all the glory. Well. All right, um, everyone, we were talking about, um, we just want to be quick today, and uh, two weeks ago, we talked about Christianity and the fact that Christians are now, Christianity is now, is now um, has fallen under the yeah, minority category in the UK, and it's giving us concerns, and last week we, we came across some videos um, online just to confirm what Going on yeah, there. the news that it's, it happened that um, this has been going on for a while now, and this just those videos just confirmed the um, news that that sprang, sprang up some weeks ago, and the chat that we have talking about the, showing different religion and and the fact that you know Christianity you know reduced a lot and other religion actually gained number while Christianity did not. So uh, we'll be talking about this again today because we promised to do um, a part two of this particular topic. And I think it's very essential because this is the, this is just, um, how do I put it now? Like if Christianity is depreciating, like, you no, know, like is um, falling under the yeah, minority. Fine, yeah. yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, it's, a, it's supposed to be a major concern f um, f to so us gosh. because when Christ said we should go out and preach the gospel, and that's not what's happening, because if we're actually following Jesus' um, command, we are supposed to be gaining to the king. They're supposed to be gaining to the kingdom. But if we are having decrease instead of increase, it means that there's something wrong somewhere, and that's our, that's our, our our whole being, like of being of being Christians, is just I don't know. So we need to talk about this extensively because I mean, this we can't just put this aside and shove this aside and carry on being doing our thing. So, yeah. So well, uh, just uh, like you said, I believe this is a concern, a matter of your concern, every right now. And mm. uh, I also believe God is not happy, and He's not happy. It means his children are not doing some things right. If that's that's if they are doing anything at all, or that's if we are doing anything at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, the reason why God created us is to give him pleasure. And one of the things that gives him pleasure is when his kingdom prospers mm -hmm. through us. And you know, even after that week that we saw those things that we saw, I still you know stumble on some other things, even though they're not so much of uh, a news. Mm. Uh, some of these things I saw have been around since like, I think, I think 2017, 2015, and you know, all of those things. But I have discovered that this thing is not just happening now. It's that's been mm -hmm. around for yeah. a while. It's just that mm -hmm. the decline is now, you know, becoming more obvious mm. now. And sure. It's important for us, just like you said earlier, that we must talk about this. Uh, well, today we'll be taking um, all the all the things step by step, mm -hmm. breaking it down. Mm -hmm. Because I think last week we just like discussed and just touched here and there and there. But today we are going to be breaking everything down. Why we are having um, why all this? Yeah, why we are having all this city. here mm -hmm. and what we should do what we should do. And I think we need to touch the areas where, like the evangelism um, part, uh -huh. other things that actually bring people to Jesus and bring like the, the real life, not just going and dragging people and just, just because we want to fill the church, but the things that we are supposed to do, the life that's supposed to go out from us to people that makes them know Christ and have Christ. That even when they are out of the church, they are not throwing everything that has been heard in church. They are not throwing it away. It's not like because what I remember when I just used to go to, when I was just a church goer. Once I leave the the church building, everything that has been said that day is just gone. So we meet again the next Sunday, and I think that's what that we have those kind of people in the church 
we just go to church because well, they just acknowledge there's one God somewhere and we have to just do it because it's part of our our the days of the week. Sunday is for church. Let us go to church and that's it. So that's not what we, that evangelism part needs to be addressed. It needs to be addressed because I believe when John the Baptist, when he was preparing people for Jesus Christ, people that were coming to be to, to get baptized, they, they were they, like they repented and it was true repentance. That's what led them to confessing now, of their sins. To my mind. So we seem to have two major things to address here. I think the first one, just like you're saying, is a uh, part of evangelism. And the second part would be after these people have been born to Christ and they've been brought to the church, there's something the church must do right. To keep these people in faith, yeah, I don't know, right? so yeah. we have to look at what has to happen outside and what has to happen in the church. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, true, Correct. true. And I think the point you're talking about—that's where discipleship comes in. Comes in yeah. Because when you just preach to a person and you're not keeping tabs, you're not like trying to know how the person is doing mm -hmm. because the person is still very fresh in faith, mm -hmm. and the person needs one that that is experienced high in anointing, one that you know been through that journey for a while okay. to be able to put him or her through because the journey is just is you have only one route to heaven. So if you have someone that's that is ahead of you, it means that those things you will face, the person has gone through it and the person is able to guide you through your own journey mm -hmm. as you're that okay you get to this stage of your life this is how i went through mine my mistakes this is what happened this is how i was able to get back on my feet and you know discipleship helps people not to make the mistakes that other people have made because they those ones have gone through that part mm -hmm. and they've they've they, they they know better mm -hmm. they know better so discipleship helps helps those ones that are under that discipline to be able to for, for them not to make some mistakes that could have been avoided. Exactly. So, you know, just like you said, after evangelism, these people need follow up. Exactly. I'm not just calling to say, oh, are you coming to church on Sunday? That's not the follow Because I was part of the evangelism team exactly. once. And that the follow up, when they say follow up, the follow up they do is just to say, oh, are you coming to church? This and that. That's all the follow up they do. And when they say that this, this person has been coming to church regularly, they don't follow up. So when they say follow up, they follow up only when they don't see members in church. And that's not what follow up is all about. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, so I discipling the person. Just, yeah, it's just like you mentioned as well. One crucial ingredient that seems to be missing in the church to me is that discipleship. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus says, ah, go into the world and make disciples make of disciples. all nations. So I think it's... Uh, the, a very vital part of church growth because now today we talk about church growth and we look at numbers and the yeah. material things the church is able to put together mm -hmm. when we look at such a church we say oh okay the church is growing mm -hmm. and the truth is now that you just mentioned it it, it occurred to me that we really can't do much without you know, an intentional effort in the area of discipleship. Mm -hmm. So we have to define what discipleship is. Don't you think so? Yeah, we have true. to define what discipleship is and what should the discipler carry that would empower the disciple yeah, to true. become what it, Jesus says in John chapter 15 that I have chosen you and I've sent you to bear fruit that your fruit may remain. Mm, so true. I saw that some years ago and it became a matter to me personally. I began to try to understand what Jesus meant by saying a fruit will remain. So it means that one could actually be a fruit and the fruit won't stay. Yeah, it won't stay. Right? So that takes us back to the issue of discipleship as well, which by the grace of God has the Holy Spirit helps my mother. Helps and helps our pastor. Because <laughs> they're the one that is lecturing us. So um I I was reading a, just about this discipleship. I was reading, I, there's a book I'm reading, I'm still on the book. Okay. And the book to, is talking about leadership and the vessel the vessel that you know what but God looks for in yes vessel. in the vessel. And the, the the author said something. He said he said um as a leader you want to make sure that you want to produce your kind. So who are you? If you are 
onto this discipleship of a thing. Who are you going to produce? produce. If you are going to birth yourself, that means if you are not, you are free, you yes, shall, shall know them. them. So, so whoever you, you are, you, are you replicate. Really so if you replicate someone like you, who are we? Go what are we, we going to be? To be yes, what are we going to be having in the church? church. Because it's a matter of multiplication. Mm -hmm. Once you keep multiplying, the good multiply and the and right, the bad multiply. Right. So it's a matter of multiplication, mm -hmm. and you know there is strength in number, mm -hmm. and that's what we are facing now because the real life, the people that carry the real thing, they are not multiplying. Mm -hmm. So the ones that are carrying the things, the, yes, the ones that are multiplying are the ones that are just giving themselves. I don't know. They live on grace, and the kind of grace that they live on, I don't know their own concept of grace. <laughs> so, you know, when you see all these people that their concept, any small thing they are saying grace, beware of them. And that's the mm. truth, because you don't just talk about grace anyhow. The thought, I mean, for me, in my own quiet time, the thought of grace make me, it makes me, rather, it makes me, Trouble. yeah, it makes me sober. sober. So when I think of grace, I don't brag. I am very sober because I don't think of oh the grace of God. I need in fact that grace wants to make me sit sit right mm -hmm. that I can't be messing up. Oh. So that's my own yeah. And I said, it, so when me I think of grace, oh it doesn't make me brag that I know our Jesus. But is it's hyper <laughs> so when I just hear people talk about grace, I hear some pastors talk about grace and everything. I am not saying that grace is what yeah grace. yeah. But the, the way they just the have the whole thing, it just makes you feel like you can do anything and grace is available. No, that's not what God is saying. The grace he, give, he, he, he gives to us is not for us to mess up. Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of people that are multiplying in the church. Yeah. So these people are leveraging on grace that makes them do anyhow. But just in the point you just made, you know some months ago, I think some weeks ago, I was looking at uh, what scripture says about why men slept. Mm. The enemy came and so turned mm. in the midst of the wheat. And the disciples went to Jesus, or the people, the you know, the people in charge of the farm now went to Jesus and they were like, ah, okay. Uh, these two things are here. Should we uproot the wheat? Yes. So uh, I said, no, leave them. Let okay. them both grow. And I began to ask myself. <laughs> so it means both the wheat and the real thing, and they the will chaff, together. Like the, 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 the tears would grow together. So, I began, so once the seed has been sown, has been cast into that place, you discover that one way or the other, there will be other things that will begin to grow okay. in the vineyard. And you know, that's, that, 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 <laughs> that is, that is, yeah. All right, um, so much has been said. Let's go on a quick break. When we come back, we are going to be talking about this extensively as we are in the church we need to understand that you know the church is not just a place for us to come and dance to some music to come and listen to your to your awesome and melodious choir that's not what the church is about but the church is real business and we as christians we have we have been we have some work that has been committed to us by jesus and i think it's high time we took that job seriously that's work we need to take it seriously and let us put our years of mediocrity, our years of playing around, let's put it behind us because that, those years of playing now is catching up on the church and the church is suffering a great deal as a result of all this. So when we come back from this break, we'll be talking extensively about this. Please do not go anywhere, we'll be right back. Back. If you're just joining us, this is Ruth and Revive, and you're watching this on Super Screen Television. Real quick, and um, if you have not followed us 
on all social media platforms this is the right time for you to do that we are available on instagram twitter youtube and facebook you can follow us all at super screen tv and g make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel and turn on the notification bell so you can get notified whenever um, a new post has been made and if you miss out on or if you've missed out on any of our previous episodes because trust me every episode on root and revive is power packed and it's very rich you don't want to miss anyone on it i'm telling you you'll gain and learn something myself here on this program i learn things every day because the oldest Spirit is the one that directs this program and not us so myself i learn things so if i'm learning things here on this show you i'm sure you at home you are going to learn a whole lot of things so please do well to go back to our previous episodes and make sure you watch them and as you watch please make sure you note things down yeah and um you can also follow us on your yeah, instagram like our post make sure that the yes, engagement on this post that will keep us going all right thank you very much in advance okay pastor victor <laughs> um talking about this um we we just you know introduced that before we went on that break and i'm glad that like i said the holy spirit is the one that is directing this program we didn't really plan to sell all those things but i want us to to um carefully talk about the areas where the church missed it and you know the things that we ought to be doing to birth this this life so what are the things that you think decrease the, like the church and what do you think the church is not doing anymore that has put us in this condition because i'm going to be talking about some some um some news some th some events that happened that you know came to um the internet we'll be talking about it shortly but i want you to, to take us through the things that you feel the church are not doing any more the things they have done that has put us into it, that has put us on this point now. Okay. Now I like that question because it has been a body on my heart for some time now. And I have also been personally looking into what has gone wrong. Just like you've asked. You see the church is in the trouble that we are now because the reason, the very life of the church, the essence, the reason why God gave us a church, made us into a church, has been removed from the picture. If not totally, because by the grace of God, I believe we still have some of our churches that are still able to keep the message. You see, in First Corinthians, I think, the Bible, Paul was talking about the difference between the message of Christ and the Jews and the Greeks. So now, it says there that uh, the Jews they will ask for signs, which they did when Jesus was around. Mm. In, I mean, in person, they were asking Jesus, "We want to do miracles to show us a sign, and we will believe that we are the Messiah." And the, you know the response Jesus gave to these mm. people. So. The Jews ask for signs. The Greeks ask for, you know, wisdom. They seek wisdom. They seek the wisdom of men. They believe in science. They believe in all of those things. But Paul was saying that to the Jews, Jesus is stumbling block. To the Greeks, these two groups of people, they don't like the message. Of the cross. So where I'm going is that the first, the number one ingredient that we seem to have missed in the body of Christ in the church today is the message of the cross. People don't, people don't. When the sin of a man has not been revealed to him, that man has not been seen. Because even when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, the first thing it does is to take the person to cover it. To see the shedding of the blood of Christ, to see what Jesus had to go through, to convict that man of three major sins, his own sin, the righteousness of God, and you know, the judgment of God and the judgment of the world. You know, these things are there. So anyone that has not been to Calvary, that has not been to the cross, cannot he can be in the church physically, but cannot understand a lot of things. And unfortunately, 
some of these people that we've not given the message of the cross to, mm -hmm. they will stick around. They will grow in whatever they have without the cross. Mm -hmm. I used to tell people that I'm not boasting, but one of the reasons why it might be difficult for me to just yank, you know, Christianity off or just go out. And depending on the grace of God, don't get me wrong, but I was taken to Calvary. I saw my Savior and I saw the things he went through. I went. And because of the knowledge of what I you know, saw with my own eyes, uh, you will have to do a lot to get me out of that knowledge. You have to do a lot to get me out of that you know, thing that I received. I don't know if you understand what I'm mm -hmm. trying to So it will be difficult for you to just take it away. So the message of the cross has to come back. You see, I love to prosper. The Bible says that, a, you know, Paul was saying that I, I wish that to prosper, even as your soul prospers. I love to prosper. But it depends on our definition of prosperity. Of prosperity. So the message of prosperity, you know, has been misunderstood, has been manipulated. Some spirits, I believe, have seduced the church into chasing after, after shadows. In Philippians chapter 4, Paul was talking about the things we should not worry about. He says, be anxious for nothing. Mm -hmm. I think from verse 8, he began to talk about the things we should fix our attention on. Mm -hmm. Permit me to say that our attention has gone away from those things. Which is things that are honorable, things that are pure, things that are these, all, all of those. These are the things he mentioned, but the attention of the church today, if you meet a Christian today who is in the church, and you begin to talk about the cross in the church, you might fall into trouble. Mm. They begin to see you as, hello, I'm in the church. I'm in the church, yeah. Oh, how can you be talking to me about the cross now? And by the time we take touch light, the touch light of the word of God, so look no deeper into what that person is carrying, you will see that the cross is not there. The person is probably in the church to get the bread from God, just like mm. those people that were looking for Jesus in John chapter 6. And that is not the plan of God. So the number one ingredient, sorry I took that long to mm, explain, no, uh, that's the it sense. cannot be overemphasized. The number one ingredient that we must be in the back. I have discovered that people that you preach, anybody that you preach the Calvary to, the message of the cross to, the Satan that will take them away will work very hard. He will have to work very hard because the sins of this person would be revealed to him. He would see how sinful he has been. The love of God will be planted inside of him. He will see God the way he should see God. He will see Jesus the way he should see Jesus. He will understand the concept of the kingdom, the concept of the cross. So this person, when the Greeks are talking about signs, he just laughs mm -hmm. because he has seen the true salvation. When the Jews are talking about signs, he just laughs because he received something. Number one, the message of the cross. Number two, our life. Our lives. Mm -hmm. So we cannot give what we don't have. There was a time I would talk to someone, the person would cry. Other times I would talk to other people. They would just be looking at me and they would just go <laughs> back to God in prayer. They said, I don't understand what is going on. Why is it that I would talk to this person? This one will cry. And after some time I would talk to another person, the person will not even feel anything. He told me that time you talked to anyone and that person gave you that attention. Check your activities around that. Check your own life around that time. So I discovered that the moment our gaze goes in the way from the person of Jesus Christ, there is nothing we can do. The decline will keep happening. Things will keep deteriorating. So Jesus has to come back into the picture in our, not just in our message, our lives. Our lives too. The third thing, like you rightly mentioned the other time, is discipleship. The church, I need mean, to say, today, we are not particularly interested in the fruitfulness of those who bring to church. Because every general overseer, most general overseers, uh, uh, church leaders, they believe church growth is 
in bringing the number in. But that's not for us. Discipleship is not just keeping someone living somewhere and you are calling once in a while. One of the important things that leaders must take upon themselves is having some of these disciples with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's expensive. It's costly to live like that. But our trust has to be in God. Some of these people have to be with us. They have to see them, they have to watch as we do the things we do. Because the truth is, some of those that will just come on Tuesdays or come during the week and come on Sunday, these people just go back, they just go back to their regular lives. Happen? But when they are around, I have discovered that the transference of life happens when people continually come in contact with and it's like that too because the power of influence cannot be cannot be you know just mm -hmm. ignored if it's you will discover that the bible says that evil communication corrupts good man mm -hmm. right good man so what would good communication do to you? it would be a blessing right mm -hmm. so we have to go back to discipleship and i'm looking forward to a time when you will permit us to talk about discipleship <laughs> Until that very soon. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. And I don't know. I don't want to say I'm tired of talking about what is happening in the church, because I think last week we were still talking about uh, a song. A song. Should, can we call him a song minister? <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's a gospel artist. Because yes. when you say a gospel, a song minister, minister, that one is advanced. He's a gospel artist, and you know. I want to say this, mm. but you know what? I just have to say it. Mm. <laughs> is a is a, is a, is a gospel it's artist, a gospel artist. and you know, his style, his dressing, his the way he talks. Everything is wrong. Everything is wrong, and I won't mention the name more because ah, uh, please. This media. Yeah, I can't mention the name, but. Is a popular, it's quite popular. People know him, people know him, and you know, he has done some songs. But there is something I want to say. He has, has, of course, he's popular. So, if you're popular, you have platforms. And you know, when I took it to myself to actually check out his music, the songs that he sings, I did not find anyone that I connected to. and. I checked the comments on this platform where I checked where I checked out his music. Someone said something. One of his people said, "Ah, that he, that that she can compare his tune or the beat to that of Davido." That's extreme. That's too far. If someone is telling you, as a gospel artist, that your music can Reminds be compared. Him, uh, brings a picture of yes, the video to that. Mind. She said I can, I can put it with the, side, the, side the side. And it feels good to be grooving. Grooving and, and what, what? What is that? <laughs> what is grooving and worshiping? <laughs> I don't know. This is not about being judgmental, but the truth has to be told. That's. You know, I thought I was I was just being over this thing, but when I saw that comment, comment uh -uh, there is there, 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 there is supposed to be a difference between a very a, a long gap between those in the world and those for Christ. If you, as a gospel artist, you're being told that your song it can be compared to that of Davido, and that's the way all of your songs are, ah. like those, that's the kind of song you make. You are grooving and worshiping. That's not. That's not it. Mm. You can't. Be, there's a vi there's a video. I'm sorry. I'm I'm taking this long. No, no, no. There's a video I saw about a pastor trying to talk about, and that's the first time I've ever seen a pastor talk about that that kind of that like give that kind of sermon. And I was very happy I saw that. Mm. I'm, I don't know why I, I I lost the video. The man said he, he, he was addressing people that listen to worldly music. You know, he gave an he gave an illustration. He said, "Okay, because if you say now that you should not listen to it, that people will be asking you that where is it in the Bible." He now said, "Okay, imagine Jesus is seated in front of you. Those songs that you sing, begin to sing it to Jesus, 
And imagine, just imagine, what if will Jesus be glorified? Because we know how songs glorify God. Now, will Jesus be glorified? Imagine you are seeing Jesus seated in front of you. Begin to sing those words, to, those lyrics. Sing it to Jesus. All those, oh, baby, I want to begin to, that's where the man said, begin to sing it to Jesus. Now, tell yourself, how will Jesus feel? Honestly. Now, that answer, that is what you should do. If you don't feel right about what you feel, that is not what, that's not the, that's not the way you should go. Because, in fact, gone are the days when we even have those music, they, they even used to quote their words. Now, they are all out. All out. They put everything in the lyrics. So, when we say that, could, can we say that? We now have another Jesus that ah. is in the church. I don't know because why. Just people, you know, we mention Jesus, even in some of these songs. You know, there's one song that I know. Maybe, maybe we have different Jesus, of course. You know, there's also one song that says, your mom, Jesus, oh, <laughs> you go. So, in, for, the, for the person to say, Amy, your mom, the person has heard that, ah, Jesus, oh, you Yes, and even in Matthew 24, Jesus yes. said, the first Messiah. So, but we're, we're even talking about the ones that are just doing these things. And they are actually calling, oh. like, our Jesus, gone gone in the church. No, 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 the truth is, like, you know, the Bible says that, uh, my sheep hears my voice. I know them and they follow, and they follow me. me. So, the, our Jesus is a spirit. The Bible says that God is spirit and they that worship, worship him. Worship him, so, worship him is spirit. That's so, scripture. So, I want to believe that if I have a Jesus that keeps me holy, mm. if I have a Jesus that gives me sanity, spiritual sanity, helps me to want to live a you know, more holy life mm -hmm. and all of that, it's a spiritual thing. It is within me. It yeah. is within me. Now, you can come. I just want to, you know, put a clear mark on that. You can come and say, Jesus. The only thing that would make your Jesus my Jesus would not be just in the words. Because words. there's going to be another Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's going to be other desires. There's going to be Antichrist. Because Antichrist, too, is Christ. He's, a, he's going to be a form of Christ, an anointed person. I don't want to go into Revelations now. Mm -hmm. So, if you come and we come together and we're talking about, oh, Jesus, 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 you can sing. You can preach. You can do a whole lot. But if uh, the Jesus you are glorifying is different from the Jesus that I have within me, then we can call Jesus Jesus. That does not make the two the same. Mm, same. I want to believe that. Yes, uh, that one is a, is that one is deep. It's deep. It's very it's deep. deep. It's deep. <laughs> so I'm not someone to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> also, if you are saying this, I basically can say, ah, no. Another Jesus, like, like Antichrist, evil, like, kill, 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 like, for me, in fact, throughout this week, I, there are still some songs that I deleted from my phone. The, the reason why I deleted this, this poor gospel artist, and they're not even doing this grooving kind of like they're singing normal worship, Those songs like. Are not just but you know, they are not blessing me, and I'm not connecting with it, and I deleted it. Now there are some songs that once I listen to them, I have. Tested and tested, and I can I I can attest to it that ah this one is from the place of death. Yes. So I don't know what is going on, and this artist you don't even need you don't need any microscope. You don't need microscope. You don't need that like that touch light that you said now. <laughs> we don't need it to on the touch. You don't need to on that touch light. It it's is so glaring. Glaring. It's glaring that this person is not yet ah. Has not been to the course. and you're ministering so and you know he said something when he when he was called to to uh, minister a song to sing a song no minister a song to sing a song he he says he said he, he talked about his look that ah, don't let this reason. one yeah don't let this one deceive you you know that you're not supposed to look that yeah, way okay. that's why you said that these things these little little things these are pointers to the fact they are not living for Christ. Now, let me, let me say this, for the sake of our viewers, 
please pay attention to this. Because you can attend such meeting or such meetings and find yourself crying. Yeah. You true. can cry. You can even find yourself speaking speaking in tongues. Ah, deaf. Uh, we are not saying this to judge or to condemn some of these places that people have been to. But the time has come when the church must go beyond the face value mm -hmm. of things, the things we see physically, the physical manifestations. Mm -hmm. It is time for us to start to start testing the spirit of whomever comes. Yes, come. It has to go beyond our crying because honestly. When we were in the world, we could make people and you cry. And you, uh, uh, even worldly you, you, song used to make people cry. Yes, yeah, even worldly song. I heard it. Because, you know, if you see, <laughs> first of all, see, there are some churches you will get to. The, hey! If the, 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 the choir sing, all those choir that they've gone through different kind of training, Trainings. if they are pianists, they are keyboardists, they are the whatever it is, just blow if they come the together and Oh God, they are light and everything. You would think you are in the presence of God. God. Whereas, it is just the sound <laughs> and the distance that is well put together, that is moving you and not the spirit. That's why when you leave those meetings, it's those concerts, church. those places that you go to year, every year, you don't miss this person's concert. You don't change. Your life is still the same. Mm. Like, I don't, I don't understand why. <laughs> I don't just know, but something has hit the church. That's what I know. And it will take God Himself to just come down and make people recover from this thing because havoc, oh God, so much havoc has been done, done and, and it's still been done. Made. And you know that there are people that there are some people that are just doing these things ignorantly. Yes. They don't know. They are just living their own life, uh, sha. They will just go to church. They believe that I'm sure in the church, I'm a worker. I'm sure I'm working for God. God's mercy is upon me. The pastor, the pastor will preach grace. They believe, you know, they just take in this thing and they, they live their lives innocent. They don't know anything. It's true. It's yeah, on the judgment day, they will not come and know that, ah, what, what oh is Lord. Is and that is why we are talking about these things. Because, you know, if it were to be that, oh, oh Lord, maybe I'll, it's just that I cannot put up some of my old pictures online because they are highly, they were, they are highly seductive. Mm -hmm. Else, and I don't say that because they can be saying that, oh, it's because people are dressing like this. Mm -hmm. It's because you are like this. That's why you are you are saying all of this. By God's grace, I am exposed. I am educated. I'm and I am here. sophisticated. And we are not a cake. I am not a cake. <laughs> I am modern. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it took Christ <laughs> a so lot of work well. to bring what you are saying. This is not what I used, used to, to be. Mean. So, some things went down. That one is story for another day. But those who know me, know me. <laughs> you get. So, don't say, oh, it's because you don't. This is where you, no, pain. no. That is that far from it. So, I just want to make that clear. So, it won't be like, oh, this part here judging people and saying that they're dressing we were this there. way. Ah. We were there. I was, I was there very, I was very well. There. In case you're wondering, <laughs> I was there. And... Should we meet you? We'll see all of you. <laughs> yes, I was there. So we are not talking like this because we want to be judgmental or we want some gatherings to look uh, unacceptable. Mm -hmm. But what we are saying is what accepts, what, what makes our sacrifices to God acceptable goes beyond just the gyrating and the proving. It is in the life of Christ. And that's what we are trying to present. And you said this this topic is very, very large because we have not even very, ah there, there are a lot of things that yes, we are still surface. on the surface. You made you made mention of some of something when you were talking about the um, reasons the reason why the church is like this. You talked about the um the fact the the uh, the message of the cross. Yes. Where do I start from? <laughs> Now, the message of the cross is not common. And I, when I mean it's not common, like, it is really not common. If I want to place it on a percentage, maybe it's going to be about 10%. Uh, I am hoping that... No, let, uh, let's just say 10. <laughs> 10. Let's just say 10%. The message of the cross, you know, I have 
with the message that I get now, I have that is the only place I have gotten to hear it my entire life. And that is why I'm still getting it. So the places where I've been, I've not heard this kind of message the messages are like my church, the, the present church where I attend, the kind of message I get because Christ led me to the church. So the places that Christ let me led me out of I did not get yeah, yeah. those kind of messages. And these were like big, big platform places that I left. Mm -hmm. So, the message of the cross. And now, one thing that I, that I want to say is that the messages that I, I was getting, okay, one, one thing happened. When I was still there, in those places where I was, if, when, I, when Christ came into my life, what I began to notice is that the, their messages, my spirit was not bearing witness with the message, so I was uncomfortable. So anytime I go to church, I feel so unfulfilled. I feel like I've not gotten anything. Like, I just feel, I don't feel anything. So everything coming, my spirit was not bearing witness with any of those things. They kind of lost your peace. Yes. So that was another confirmation that, oh, Christ really came. And the Holy Spirit was in me. It's in me. No what? It's in me. <laughs> so when I when Christ led me into um to the church where I attend now, it was just like I don't know. The messages that were coming out from that place was like the the, the food for my soul. It was like my spirit has been waiting for all the, everything that was being said was what I really needed. And I'm not joking, it was what I needed. Every, my spirit was bearing witness with every every message back to back and i thank god for that you know so i i, I, I don't know something. i think this is what happened to you i saw it briefly in the moment and it, as you were talking about it it just came to me in that movie the wife of Pontius the pilot was having a chat with him and pilot was asking the wife, what is truth? Yes. And the wife said something. And that thing, the first time, about that first time I saw that movie then, I made that thing in prayer point. She said, no one can tell you the truth. You are the one that can hear the truth. It is true. So, but I think one of the challenges in the church today is that we have many of us who are not looking for the truth because it was the spirit of truth that took you away from that place you know. mm. I don't know if you understand what true, I'm saying. You, you became you became starved, you became famished, you became your your spirit became famished. So your soul began to look for something better. And that's the spirit of truth. So I I'm saying this so that we all can start praying for the spirit of truth. Oh, so sure. that Wherever Let's we just find start from ourselves, there. yes. Wherever we find, because I've discovered that if we are to keep leaving this job to our pastors, platforms, and all of this, even some of our pastors are still struggling to, <laughs> you know, get themselves. So, but if you ask a Christian that is in the church, I'm not going to say whether or not you are a child of God, but if you are a Christian and you yearn for heaven, you yearn for you yearn for the kingdom of God. Wherever you are, just say that prayer. That Lord, I don't know what it is. The Bible says that in John 17, 17, the Bible says that make them holy by your truth. Your word is truth. So the truth as we speak of him now is a person. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh whether or not a statement is true or false. Oh, false. The truth in this context is Jesus. And is a person, is mm -hmm. a spirit that can actually meet you wherever you are. Just tell him, Lord, I don't know what they are talking about, but I want the spirit of truth to come mm -hmm. into me. You will discover that the spirit of truth will begin to help you discern mm -hmm. wherever you are. The summit will locate you, and you will be able to tell which is yeah. the real thing and which is, which is the pseudo thing. Yeah. That looks like. Yes, I think that you have said it all. That that's just like the simple way to help people to now. Help you. Yes. Just that just start from there. Ask for the spirit of truth because when the spirit of truth comes, as you said, as you rightly said, 
you'll be able to know what is right and what is not, what is true and what is not, what will bless your spirit and what will not. Because when I see the things that people say are blessing their spirit, I'll be like, ah, I can't blame them because it's, the spirit is not good there. Because honestly, the spirit is one. And if something is not bearing witness with my own spirit and is bearing witness with your own, there is a problem. There is, is a big problem. Is that mine or your it's own? False. It's, it's <laughs> false. So let's go go detect what is really wrong. What is wrong. So I, if people begin to take their spiritual life seriously mm -hmm. and they begin to give God attention, even these people that are giving them jokes will begin to call themselves to mm -hmm. call themselves to, to, order. to order because they will, they will know that they will be losing audience. Mm -hmm. the, the people that they are giving jokes to will begin to reject whatever they have, they, have, they have been feeding on. Mm -hmm. And they will have no choice but to run to God because I don't know. The people that were supposed to be the front runners of this thing are the ones that are now... Are the, yes. So let the people just go to God themselves. Thank God we are no longer in the days of the Old Testament mm -hmm. where you have to go to go to God through a priesthood. Now, you have the, the, the chance to go to God yourself. So whoever God leads you to, then you take it from there. Take it from there. We have limited time, so let's go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll be talking about the things that the church should do, what we need to do. We already talked about the fact that you should pray for the spirit of truth. But the other things, especially if you're in the church and you're heading a department, if you're heading a evangelism department or whatever department you're holding, or you hold a major role in your church, I think you need to listen to this um, the next the next session of this program. The things that you need to do, even you as a member of the church, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility for your own life yourself. You have that responsibility. So we all need to listen to the things that we all need to do. The ones that are, are leaders in church, the ones that are members in the church, we all need to do something. So please stay tuned. So that when we come back from this break, we can all, you know, dissect this together. I don't go up right back. welcome back um we are still on the topic about presenting being the minority uh, okay so um i want to talk about something quickly but i want to ask i want to ask this question so i don't just take our time away so what do you think we all need to do the, the leaders in the church the pastors whoever workers even the congregation what do you think we need to begin to do to correct because i believe that no matter how much damage devil has done. It is it's still something that can be redeemable. We are alive. So there is a chance for everybody to come back to the throne of grace. So what do you think that we need to do? Okay, thank you very much. You see, it is possible to read the Bible and not get a life from the Bible. It is very possible. I've met people before who put the Bible correctly. In fact, what for what I'm not sure I'm so good at that. <laughs> but for, I mean, verbatim, mm. I'm not sure. But probably because I use a version different from King James to study. But the truth is, the church, all of us, leaders and followers, have to go back to allowing ourselves to be confronted by the truth. It is not because even some of our followers don't know the truth. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? That's not the reason we are having the problem we are having. Some of us know the truth, but we don't depend on the life we will receive from the Bible for a change. And even when the Bible is bringing this truth, confronting us with this truth, we don't give ourselves. We have gone away from the mood of soberness to where we have this high-mindedness, high mind towards the Bible. So that is making it a bit challenging for the church to go. So we all have to go back to the Bible and not just read it, 
to know what is there, but to ask God to fill us with the Spirit of Christ that wrote the Bible, that upheld the Bible, so that we can begin to see the changes in our lives without going back to Calvary. There will be nothing will happen. The deterioration, the decline will keep happening, and there's nothing we'll be able to do. Oh, thank you. This is where I pray God will help us, but it's very important. Let's, let's pray for the spirit of the truth. Um, quickly, you know, I saw online the fact that even in the UK, that they, are go they want to introduce, um, they want to start teaching children, the mm. kids there, about homosexual, uh, homose uh, homosexuality, uh, about gay that. and they, lesbianism. They, they, they want to introduce in the curriculum of schools, the teaching about gay marriage. In other words, they will say, what is marriage? Marriage is when a woman and a man gets married, or a, a man, man and a woman man. gets married. So they are going to include that, you know, you did social study, right? Yeah. So the way they taught us that marriage is... Uh, marriage between a man, a man and a woman. And woman. So it can be a, a man and a man, or a woman and a, a woman. woman. Wow. A woman and a woman. So, so that, yes. that is that. And, and I think they're already, they're already doing that. They're already doing Because this came out few, so, some years ago. And so some children are somewhere uh, being taught that, that they can marry same sex. Um, sex. So and this is against clearly God. against God's standard. Yeah. It is written in the Bible. I still read it some days ago. So not even get married is one thing. In the Bible, the Bible just talks about, you know, just, I don't know. Is it fornication? It's not even talking about marriage in the Bible yet. That I'm a man and I find a man attractive is already a sin. But to now call it marriage, that has gone. That is very serious. And that's, that that's serious. little innocent children have been taught that. Those ones that when they grow up, there is nothing you will you say can't get, no. that can convince them nothing. that that what you're saying is not true. Nothing. Another one in India, a man that was arrested because he he, he, was, he was, is a pastor. Mm -hmm. And he was arrested because he was conducting a service in his church. And the, the church was arrested, closed. Arrested closed in yes, they, they closed. And the a church. bill is about to be was about because I don't think the bill is in place now was to be passed that churches should not be in, in India. So, guys, we have a lot mm -hmm. of work to do. This one because the the world is advancing. If just like you said, if nothing is being done. If we don't go to the cross, everything will keep coming down. And this one that we are seeing is just the tip of the iceberg right. because more will come. The devil is not playing. Mm -hmm. And I think we should double up. Whatever we are doing in the church, please let's double up because the devil is coming fast against the church. <clears throat> so please, this is not the time for us to just do whatever we are doing, just playing around, coming to church to come and dance away, whatever. It's not, for, it's not just to dance. There is serious work. The devil is really Rampage. grooming his demons to so launch them to release what is not good against the church. And we need to be ready to make sure that it doesn't hit us. The ones that has been done is enough. So let's just, you know, double up and make sure that we go to the place of prayer. And let's just beg God to give to give us a spirit so that we can carry the real thing in the church. Pray God to help us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we have come to the end of today's session. Thank you so much, Pastor Victor, for thank you too. For always. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. All right, so, so we'll see you again next week, same time, same station. Yeah.